Today we're going to make delicious five minute energy cookies. They're super fast and easy using grocery store staples. I know you're gonna love them. Today's five minute energy cookies use really simple ingredients, but before we get started, it's important that you preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is chop up our dates. These uh, have already been pitted, and it's important that you choose a relatively soft date if you can find it. I'm gonna give these just a very rough chop because we wanna get the dates all throughout these delicious cookies. And so these are sort of gonna be our sweetener but dates are also really high in the B vitamins and they also have fantastic fiber. And because they're a whole food, um, their sugars in them really digest easily and evenly, so you're not gonna get that major spike. So that looks pretty good. And we need about a third of a cup. So it's a little bit easier to measure the dates after you've already chopped them. So, and it's a good idea to really, yeah pack them in. So it's about this much. I have a few left over, but that's okay. I can use those as snacks. Okay, so those are the dates. And then I'm going to chop up this nice dark chocolate. I'm choosing um, a 70% today. You can go up to about an 85%, um, and that's the cacao solids. And the reason that you want to get a high proportion of cacao solids is because the more cacao or chocolate that's in a bar, the less sugar there's going to be. And that's really important, especially if you're making healthier choices. You're trying to cut back on any kind of sugar that you're eating. And these cookies are sweetened with bananas and dates, so we actually don't need that much. There we go. I like actually a really rough chop of chocolate because then you get huge chunks instead of those little chocolate chips that you can buy at the store. Beautiful. So now that we have the ingredients all prepped, I'm actually gonna start on chopping our bananas up. You can do this recipe in a food processor, but just to show you how incredibly simple it is, you don't need any equipment at all. So I'm just gonna do it in, right in this bowl here. There we go. Now, I'm gonna just talk about bananas for a second because choosing bananas is really important. You wanna look for something that actually has spots on it and it's turning a bit brown. And that's because bananas have a special kind of fiber in them. It's called pectin. Pectin has very special properties in that it can help reduce cholesterol, but it also helps um, stabilize blood sugar. But the reason it's so important to choose very ripe bananas with brown spots is because as a banana ripens, the pectins actually increase um, and the proportion of fructose in comparison to other sugars also increases. And this actually helps reduce the glycemic index of the banana. So for people who are concerned about that, Look for ripe bananas because it's actually going to have a lower glycemic index than a non-ripe banana. Plus, especially in baked goods, they tend to taste a lot better and they have more banana flavor. So I'm just mashing these up with a fork. Now, you could really do this in a food processor if you want, but this is really much easier, especially if you don't have any kitchen equipment in your house. This is a really great option. So you want to get the bananas to a place where they're quite liquidy. And again, this really just takes a couple minutes. So that's looking pretty good. Now, next we're going to fold in all of the other ingredients. So I'm going to start actually with our vanilla extract. This is one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And I'm adding that now because I want to maintain um, the liquidity of this. So you just give that a quick whisk up. And then I'm going to put in the dates. Mix that in. And again, that's one third cup of chopped dates that have been pitted. Really important to remove the pits. 
Um, next, I'm gonna put in the oats. This is one and a half cups of rolled oats. We're using rolled oats because they're actually a lot healthier for you. They um, haven't been as processed as the quick cooking oats. And again, we're always trying to eat as many whole foods as possible. And so always look for the large flake or old fashioned rolled oats as they're sometimes called. They're really your best option. And you really wanna get the oats soaked if you can and really mixed into the banana mixture. Okay, that's looking good. And next we're gonna add in some walnuts. This is one third cup of walnuts. And you know, they come sort of in halves, but I actually like to just crunch them up. There's not even a need to get the cutting board out again. I just crunch them up and throw them in here. If you don't like walnuts, there's lots of other options. You can add um, hazelnuts to this or chopped almonds. And if you're allergic to nuts, definitely go for sunflower seeds or pumpkin seeds. Those are also really delicious. Okay, last but not least, we have our chopped dark chocolate. And then I'm also gonna add a little bit of sea salt, just a couple pinches. That looks good. Um, it's really important actually when you're uh, doing any kind of baked recipe that you add a little bit of salt and that's because the contrast of the salt actually brings out the sweetness of the ingredients and because we're not using any sugar whatsoever here, it's kind of nice to have this, um, this salty hits in contrast with the banana and the dates. It really helps bring out the sweet flavor. So that's it. That's the recipe. So the next thing we're going to do is just put them onto a baking sheet. All right, and you just need a spoon. This makes about 10 medium-sized cookies, but you can also make them smaller if you like, and sometimes it's nice to make just one giant cookie. There you go. Now, these are not gonna change shape at all because there's really nothing in them that's gonna pool out, so make sure that they're the shape that you'd like before you put them in the oven. And the reason that these actually stay together is also because of the banana. That pectin, that special fiber I was talking about, has this awesome binding ability, kind of like an egg. So instead of using eggs in this recipe, bananas really take their place. So this is fabulous if you're baking for vegans or if you're just trying to cut back on animal products yourself. I also really like making a batch of these on Sunday night, for instance, and then I have a really nice, healthy, go-to snack all week long. Um, you can keep these in the fridge for up to five days, although they typically don't last that long. Okay, I think these bananas were really big, so we're gonna get actually more than 10 cookies, which is great. Awesome, we're gonna get about a dozen here. Okay, and I can actually add a little more to each of these, just to even it out. Oh, these are big guys. Okay. And the more you play with this recipe, the less you need a recipe. Again, you just really need to combine bananas with the oats, and then anything else you have in your fridge. Again, if you don't like dates, raisins are a really nice thing to put in or even dried cranberries. One thing I recommend though, if you're going to use any kind of dried fruit is that you look for an unsulfured dried fruit. Sometimes they add sulfur to sort of the paler fruits and that's to preserve their color. Um, obviously dates don't have that problem, but golden raisins for instance do or apricots. They're also delicious in here, but try and find an unsulfured version if you can. So I'm just sort of packing the cookies together a little bit to make sure they stay intact when they bake in the oven. Oh, these look so good. Beautiful. So they're all done. My oven is ready to go. So I'm going to take them and bake them for about 11 to 13 minutes. So the cookies are finished. They smell absolutely incredible. So what I'm going to do now is just put them on the cooling rack. And I'll show you what you're looking for in terms of color on the bottom. Here's a good example. So they're pretty golden, um, and that's a really good indicator of when they're finished. These actually took a little bit longer than I said because they're so large. So it was about 
15 to 20 minutes altogether. So again, just keep checking the oven. If your cookies are on the smaller side, then obviously they're gonna cook in a shorter amount of time. Um, but if they're bigger, allow for a little extra. Mm. Can't wait to take a bite. There we go. And like I said, these keep for about five days, but they're best in the fridge. All right, okay, I have to just have a little taste. Mmm, they're so delicious. It's almost like mini banana breads or something. Amazing texture. They're crispy on the outside and wonderfully tender on the inside. They're so great. Again, so fast and easy to make. Five minutes is all it takes. They're called energy cookies because they're gonna give you tons of that with the oats and the dates and the banana. These are fantastic treats to take with you wherever you go. Mm -hmm.